Okay, so bed leveling, one of the arguably most important things when it comes to 3D printing. You might have heard people shout in forums, if you don't get that first layer perfect, you can never expect perfect prints. And that for the most part is pretty true. You might get away with a poorly leveled bed for small prints, but if you start doing anything longer and bigger, you're going to want a perfectly level bed. Now in this video, I'm assuming that you are doing standard leveling and that you do have a flat bed. If you don't have a flat bed and you're not doing something like mesh bed leveling, you will have a job to get a perfectly level bed. But for the most part, printers come with things like glass, which are generally pretty flat and smooth. Okay, let's dive into this. I'm going to be using a Corality CR10S for this, which is hopefully fairly standard to a lot of the printers out there. Uh, if there are any questions for your specific printer, drop me a message in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help. So I'm going to assume that this printer is completely out of level and I'm going to tighten every Z screw as high as it will go so that the printer's bed is as low as it will go. This just ensures if you're printing on a surface like PrintBite or BuildTac that when you come to level, your nozzle's not going to go crashing through the surface and damage it. So it's a good step to do whenever you're installing a new surface. Now, assuming your heater, one, has a heated bed, and two, you generally use that when you're printing, you're going to want to level your bed when it is hot. So that's the first step, heat up the heated bed. Once the bed is hot, you can then proceed to do step two which is the preliminary leveling. Now, many printers these days have some sort of assisted bed leveling in that they'll home the Z-axis and then move to each spot for you. If you don't have that luxury, you're going to need to home the Z-axis and then move this head around the four corners of the bed. You might be able to do that manually by hand, or you might have to use the move X, move Y commands on your printer's control or your computer if you're controlling your printer by a computer. Home the z-axis so on the Corality it does have assisted leveling and you can't independently home each axis so I've gone ahead and auto homed and then I'm going to start the assisted leveling and move the head to the first spot on the printer bed auto leveling next step okay so you'll see the printers now move to the first point on the bed what you're going to want to do is take a sheet of paper and place it between the nozzle and the bed you're then going to want to rotate the bed adjustment screw until that nozzle is almost touching the bed when you start to notice some tension pulling and pushing the paper you know you've got it at a good height for now anyway so I now go to the next step on the auto leveling and watch the printer move again put the paper underneath and adjust that z-axis screw until we're getting some tension again for the first pass we don't need to get too much tension next step and you go all the way around the bed trying to get that small amount of tension between the paper and the nozzle there we are. You're now going to want to go back to the start and check that first point. If you've done it like I've done and completely tightened the bed screws to start with, you'll probably find that this first point is now quite tight and will probably need uh, reducing. As you can see, I can't even get the paper in there now. So tightening the bed and there we go, paper's in. And then we're just looking for that bit of tension, bit of scratch between the nozzle and the paper. Number two, perfect. And again, one thing to note when you're doing this is you don't want to be pushing down on the bed at the same time as you're moving the paper as you'll be affecting the level of the bed. Try to hold the paper from over both sides and not push down on the bed. That way you're getting an accurate feel for the friction. Okay, so once you've done the preliminary level and moved, round, moved the head around the bed twice like that, you can now move on to step three of this process, which is the fine tuning. 
Now, obviously a paper leveling is not real world printing. It's just a trick that people in the 3D printing community have come up with to assist with bed leveling. Nothing beats leveling the printer while it's actually going, in my opinion anyway, because you're seeing how the printer is actually performing in motion and when filament is actually coming out of the nozzle. So a little trick I have here is to set up a level test file. I then have this on my printer and can rerun it anytime I want to fine tune the leveling again. For example, if I put in a new nozzle or if I tweak something on the printer. What my level test is, is effectively just a number of different rectangles that the printer draws around the bed, around the outside, around the central area and one right in the middle. I've put a link to this in the description and have set up in Thingiverse multiple different layouts suitable for different printer build volumes. They are all square, so if you do have a rectangular build plate, then just stretch it in your slicer. Uh, it's also set to 0.2 millimeters of layer height. So again, that's the parameter you're going to want to choose for your first layer height in your slicer. For this step, it really helps if the filament you're using is as different a color as possible to the build plate. If you're printing on clear glass, black is a really good choice. If you're printing on a darker build plate like this one here, then a lighter color, white, or in this case, we've got my 3D Tomorrow UK PLA Zinc Yellow, um, because it just makes it easier to see. See that text down the bottom of the screen? Yeah, it's hard to see, isn't it? And now it's perfect. Same principle for leveling the bed. Opt for a different color to the background as possible, because then it makes your life easier to see what's actually going on. Right, let's get this started. Print from SD, level bed test. Again, when you're leveling your printer, or to be honest, doing any printing, nice filament always helps. Of course, I'm gonna plug my 3D Tomorrow UK PLA, but you can choose any good brand out there. What this does is let you visually inspect how level you've got that bed in the previous step and make those little micro adjustments now to get it perfect. Now, one thing to note here is it helps to make adjustments bit by bit and not too much. Sometimes you can think one part of the bed is actually too close, but it's just a delay from the previous section. So adjust slightly and see how you get on. You can see here as the first loop goes round, it's actually already got a pretty good level just from that first step. However, there is a small gap between the two lines coming here, which shows that the bed needs to be closer to the nozzle or the nozzle closer to the bed. And so we're going to need to loosen those screws to allow the bed to come up a little bit. One thing to note is you can sort of ignore the first line because the nozzle wasn't necessarily extruding at full whack straight away. Down in this corner, it's looking a little bit tight. So I'm going to just tighten that corner a little bit. Down here, a slight gap between the lines. And so I'm gonna loosen the bed a bit to allow it to come up. Same again here, loosen that bed slightly to allow it to come up. This process does take a little while, but it means you get a very, very level bed, which of course helps you no end in the long run. While it's going, I'll talk a little bit about bed surfaces. Obviously this here is standard glass. The other side is what's known as ultra base. For standard glass, I like to print at 50 degrees C, but I also use this here, 3D lac. I think it's great stuff. You see now the printer moves to the next rectangle. And again, we can check that the level is still the case at this point. One thing to note with bed leveling is it's better to err on the side of caution and have your nozzle too close to the bed than it is to have it too far away because you know having it too close to the bed will still adhere and later on it, the print will remain stuck. It just means you're more likely to get artifacts such as elephant's foot. But if your surface isn't perfectly level, then you're never going to get a perfectly level bed. And so that has to be expected somewhat. For example, I can see here in this corner that the lines aren't as close together as they are in this further out section. So in this instance, I'd probably let the bed come up a little bit more just to ensure that this point here is 
perfect and then the outside would have to be a little bit too close but I'm willing to deal with that. Okay, let's jump across into a quick theoretical lesson. The three sorts of lines you can expect to see when you're doing a print bed leveling test come into these three categories. Too far, perfect, or too close. Let's start with too far. If your nozzle is too far away from the bed, you will see lines that have a clear gap or separation between them. And if you were to look at this from a side view, it would effectively be like three circles along the bed. Obviously, this means you're not getting adequate squash onto the bed and you'll be getting pretty poor layer adhesion. So you need to loosen the bed so that it comes closer to the nozzle in this situation. Now let's talk about the second thing you don't want to see, which is a nozzle being too close to the bed. In this situation, although the bed can be completely covered, it is often quite patchy. You'll generally find that where the nozzle has been moving is at the lowest point in terms of plastic and there's sort of peaks created either side of the nozzle where the material is forced sideways out of the nozzle rather than directly below where it's meant to be extruding. Obviously in this situation you need to tighten the bed screws so that the bed moves further away from the nozzle. And then finally what we're aiming for the perfect layer where all the lines are the same thickness, height, and you get a nice squash to the bed, but not so much so that it's appearing too close. As I said before, if you have to go one side or the other because the bed is not perfectly flat, then it's best to have some sections perfect and some sections too close rather than anything veering too far away. In terms of my experience with different beds, I really do think glass is one of the best surfaces out there as it generally tends to be pretty flat. Things like a flat plate of aluminium are more affected by heat of the bed and so will tend to warp a bit uh, as the bed gets hotter, particularly if you're switching up to those really high temperatures of things like ABS. So glass would definitely be what I'd recommend. Things like print bite, build tack, etc. sometimes have difficulty not adhering to the print as such, but actually staying fixed on the surface. So I've never massively been a fan of those. A few bulldog clips on glass and you're onto a winner in my opinion. If you are using the adhesive surfaces though, like print bite or build tack, others are available, then I generally find another 10 degrees C on the bed helps improve that print adhesion. So for PLA, for my UK PLA, I choose 60 degrees. The upside of those sorts of surfaces though, is that you don't need to use any aftermarket products like glue, etc. Anyway, look at that. Marks out of 10, I think that's pretty perfect. If you think so, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see more tips like this in the future, let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe. Now that the filament line is released, I will be doing more little simple tutorial videos like this to help people get the most from their filaments. Of course, a great filament is only great if it's used in the right way and little tricks and tips like this will help you get the most out of your printer. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas for future videos or things you're struggling with on your printer that I might be able to help with, let me know. See you next time. Cheers.